All right, y'all, let's go ahead and wrap this series up. So we're talking about the garbage disposal and the dishwasher being on the same circuit. I figured that it would be a touchy subject, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, we're going to talk about it today, okay, and we're going to try to make it work, okay? And in my opinion, you can make it work in these certain circumstances that we're going to talk about today. But one thing I do want to note before we get started, if you're familiar with the code and you want to weigh in on this, go ahead, head to 430 and see how you feel like those applications for short circuit ground fault protection weigh in on this subject. Now this is going to be for you and your AHJ to work out and it's all going to be matter of interpretation on what you feel like the max amps that the disposal could be. I'm not going to weigh in my opinion because when you read it you could you know you can interpret it 15 different ways okay but if you if you're familiar in the code and you want to go in and weigh in you're welcome to uh, you nobody's going to hold it against you but let's just talk about let's uh take those interpretations from 430 aside and let's just talk about amperage of a couple appliances okay and how you could make in my opinion um, the garbage disposal and the dishwasher on the same circuit and then at the end of this video i'm going to give you my opinion after we work through all of this and if you go read th through 430 on whether or not it's even worth the stress to even think about it okay and, and whether or not we should just go ahead and just pull another circuit but let's go ahead uh let's go ahead and work through this thing all right so let's imagine in this fake scenario Remember, we're trying to make this work, and we have a 5-amp disposal, and we have a 9.5-amp dishwasher. This is probably a pretty common setup, okay? Um, you know, so this is, uh, you know, this is something that could, could, could happen with no, uh, with no issues probably. But let's go ahead and work through this. So we're going to need to take our dishwasher, and we're going to need to take it at 125%, okay? It's going to be considered a continuous load, or, and remember, you have to go back to the definition of continuous load. Is it likely to run for more than three hours? And the answer is yes. Uh, I have, auto, you know, most of them. Anyways, you have a setting on there. You push a button. It's automatically three, four, five hours. Okay, so it's, you know, it's likely to run for more than three hours, in my opinion. So if I was the AHJ on this, I would want you to at least take this at 1.25. So we took this uh, 9.5 amps. We took it at 125 percent. That gives us 11.87 amps. Okay. Now there is no 80% rule as far as filling up the breaker. We've already fulfilled that in that code right there. I've got a video detailing that on my channel called the 80% rule explained if you want to go check it out. But now technically we could fill a 20 amp breaker up to the capacity, okay, um, without issues all the way up to 20 amps, okay, but we're not going to go down that trail today. So we've already done our quote 80% rule, which is our 1.25 rule on the dishwasher. Now all we have to do is add our 5 amp disposal, and that's going to give us approximately a total of 17 amps, okay? So we got 3 amps to, to fudge with without incorporating any of the rules in 430, okay? So I feel like, in my opinion, I would pass this as an electrical inspector. Even if you read through 430 and you, you as you interpret some of the provisions there that it's talking about for these 1 horsepower or less motors, or less than 1 horsepower motors, is that, you know, is it going to start? Is it ever going to trip? Are you going to have any problems? And in my opinion, no. You could run this 5 amp disposal and this dishwasher, all things being equal without them changing out any the equipment, and it'll never trip indefinitely. Okay. Now you're not going to run the equipment indefinitely because the disposal you're only going to run, you know, what, 30 seconds at a time. And it's very short duty cycle. So just wanted to show you guys how we could make this work in the code, in my opinion. Um, you can let us know your opinion down in the comments, but we've all got opinions. So <laughs> I just hope you guys have a great day and uh, we're going to, you know, cap off with this subject here. I figured this would be a touchy subject and, uh, you know, I've gotten some interesting, good comments, and, you know, it's just fun to talk about this stuff. This is a pretty common one that comes up out in the field, um, and I think there are some other, um, you know, things that we could talk about about this subject, but I think we've, you know, worked it out. You know, why should we do it? We talked about that one day. We talked about, is it even code compliant? I feel like it is under certain circumstances, and then today we broke down the math and, you know, showed how in the code that if we wanted to do it, we probably could. But, you know, after working through all this in the series, I was a really hardcore pull one circuit and split it. But I've had a couple of buddy of my, you know, buddies of mine get burned off of the dishwasher being too large um, and having to pull a second circuit in a finished home. OK, after after the rough and on the final. So it's one of those deals where, you know, at the end of the day um, and one of the situations was is where it was just. They were missing that circuit, and I think they were pulling it off of the uh, the kitchen circuit, which you cannot do. So don't ever pull your disposal or your dishwasher off the kitchen circuit. But it's just one of those things that 
after working through this series, I was a hardcore pull one circuit. But it's like after working through all these things, and if you go through and you read uh, and, and interpret 430, it's like let's just go ahead and maybe maybe pull another circuit. Not saying you can't pull one circuit, um, but maybe – you know, it's not worth the stress. You know, sometimes you get to a certain point in the code and you're like, man, this just really isn't worth the cortisol released for the $200 it's going to cost me or whatever to just go ahead and pull another circuit. Yeah, And you guys can comment down below if you have a part in the code like that where you're like, you know what? It's not worth the stress release. Let's just go ahead and do it. Does that make sense? You know, so at the end of the day, if I'm sitting here trying to convince the electrical inspector and it's fine if you have a really experienced electrical inspector who understands all these things okay or is a previous electrician but when you don't and often we don't we're dealing with inspectors who don't have a lot of experience and that's okay too because they're learning and they're working through it sometimes we have to kind of really lay things out in the code and they're just not convinced so it's like by the time i do all that maybe i'm just going to pull another circuit and be done with it because i Every minute that I spend trying to convince someone else of the code, I can be pulling more wire. And I'll be honest with you guys, and you guys will, you know, either are there or working your way there in your career where you're worth a whole lot more money with tools on than you are trying to convince somebody of the code. So I am the electrical code coach. It's good for us to work through difficult things like this, guys. Not everything in the code is just black and white, and every area does things a little bit different. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. We'll get into something a little more, hopefully fun and exciting tomorrow, and I uh, just can't wait to be uh, to see you guys win tomorrow. Let's go ahead and get to it.